Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, I went to Antiquarium in Weedon today, and in fact I went to Vintique as well. Um, and I have a tale of woe because the first few bits I took shots outside so that I could have an icon and I did an outside intro, in fact I did it twice because something went wrong the first time and then, yeah, for some reason it's not on the camera stuff starts at one I did all that stuff I was very careful about doing the shots because I knew that I forgot to do it previously and nothing came out I don't know what went wrong at all um, stuff happens sometimes I have no idea um, so I don't have an intro outside like I normally do and and it's lovely weed and Beck with the Regency or well, the Georgian barracks and all that kind of stuff, and I did the blurb about it. You have to, I did it again when I did Vintique, so you'll have to wait for that one to come out to see the proper intro. Um, yeah, it's stuff, and I'm not going 20 miles back to Whedon and back again, or 15 miles, I think it is anyway, and back again just to shoot less than a minute's worth of film and take two photographs. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not doing. It's too cold, it's too damp, it's too everything, it's bad, and I, my health is still not great. But you know, I'm dedicated. I went out for three hours and filmed. So, but anyway, um, did go to uh, Weedon, did Antiquarium and Vintique, and um, yeah, so lots of new glass, a few old friends in there that I just brushed by. Um, yeah, lots of new glass, and I did, uh, no, not in this one anyway, but I'll say in the next one. But anyway, um, with that said, uh, it's still a good place to go. Weedon is a great place to go because you've got the um, Village Antiques Market, you've got Antiquarium, and you've got Vintique. What could be better? Anyway, um, with that said, let's get on and I'll look around antiquarium because I did get the opening inside shot that did record and um, and we'll go and have a look at some glass so let's go so I've come inside the antiquarium this is what it's like inside so it goes all the way down here and then um, along here and all the way down here and there's another room down the end over there that goes all the way the width across so just come in, and um, as you come in, so these, spotted them immediately, these are Dartington Ripple vases, and we saw some in, um, a big one in, uh, in the village antiques market, but I've, you hardly ever see the small ones. So, yeah, I'll look those up. I don't recognise this at all. I don't think it, the shape isn't a, yeah, I don't think it's a Stuart one. Someone like Webb or someone like that, or Webb Corbett. So, the Dartington bowls have been a little bit tricky. So, this is 1986, 85. This is a large salad bowl, doesn't tell you there's a smaller one. Okay, it's a bit like this, with the ripple, so large ripple. Then you've got this smaller one, but this one is more enclosed at the top, so it's not this one either. If I go back to 1981, there is this bowl here, okay. And it has another bowl that's four and a quarter inches that goes with it. So, I think it's this bowl, it's an FT... 287 from 1981 because there is no picture of the bowl that, that we saw exactly. It is definitely a darting to one. The, the ripple is right, the cut top and everything about it is right for it to be a darting to one. And they made everything, you know, there's jugs, there's vases, ice bucket in the ripple pattern. So it, it was they were doing it like a full service of stuff, but all separate pieces. But anyway, uh, I think this is what it is. 
It's an FT287, the small bowl, uh, ripple salad dish as opposed to bowl. Um, and it's from 1987. And the fact that it's um, a bit more open at the top makes it a bit more dish-like, I suppose. So let's go with that. Some bits down here. Not anything too excited. I don't recognise the owl. I will have a quick look. This is um, Ravenhead. I can't remember. It's got the name Fire in it. You can see it's got like little flames around the bottom. So this will be from the 70s. But I can't remember the name. I'll look that up. I don't recognise these at all. I can't, I can't get them out. But uh, I can't see any marks on them. But yeah, I will find the name. It's got, definitely got fire in the name. So the name I couldn't think of was White Fire. So it's Ravenhead White Fire. Um, and this is actually the jug here that we were looking at. And it, it's part of a cream set. It's a jug and a cream and a sugar bowl set. And look at the little box, boxes it comes in. Quite cool. With fire coming out of it, yeah. And um, I did find something very interesting as well. This is the full range here. So this is the cream jug sugar bowl set. Then you've got small ashtrays, large ashtrays, um, Sunday dishes, small bowl, table bowl. Um, so yeah, there's no glasses or any of those other things with this. It looks like looking in the pictures as well. It doesn't look like I've, I've not seen anything other than those things. So, um, and no colors either. So, yeah, that is the full range of it. And I do see them sometimes. And uh, I have seen the odd box as well. So, and it's everybody's saying it's 70s. I think it is from memory, just from me being a kid. These were the kinds of things that you could get then. So, yeah, I think that's right. It might be a late 60s piece. Not definite on that. Okay, here's some uh, Murano figurines um, they're a bit girly for me and pink and uh, with gold leaf um, but they're not the usual clowns um, yeah they look a bit better quality I have I do know the Murano I have seen things like this before I'll try to find them and their prices are 28 pounds each I bet they were hundreds when they were new though as usual, I um, start out wandering in the dark. I just, just punch something into Google without thinking. Um, I did find, and yeah, I did find some of the figures. I just put Murano glass ladies. Um, found this. They wanted five hundred and sixty-six pounds. I think this is the, the base is the same. Uh, the overall pattern. In fact, I think it's the same. The, hand, the way the hands are made are the same. Anyway. I got a bit smarter and you can buy them new still original but from original Murano glass handmade in Venice Italy so it's definitely made in Murano and um, yeah 679 pounds so it's not the one we were looking at had um, a white opaque hands and faces and stuff but these don't have that and um, but there are different ones all of them have got um, translucent hands and or transparent I should say hands and feet the base is still exactly the same though the mold the way it's molded the costumes are the same so yeah it is the same thing essentially just that slightly modified updated so I'm happy that it is Murano um, and £697, that's how much it costs if you want new ones. Yeah, that seems crazed, but that's how much it probably costs to get someone to make one. So there you go. Got a few decanters in here. These are just your bog standard square ones. There's a Victorian shaft and globe. But the fish, there's a Romanian fish here, but it's like a fish that's like a vase. It's got a flat bottom. It's not sitting on its fins like they usually are. It's a 
bit of an unusual. It's like a cross between the Romanian fishes and vases. Um, but yeah, you can't really use it as a vase because the top is just the mouth. But yeah, it's really unusual. I think this is Davidson's post-war, 1950s or something. But in here, look at this. That's a huge piece of um, press glass. If I come around this side, get around the other side of this telescope. Look at that. That's, it's, I put my hand on it. If I can get my hand in it. Look, look, look. Look how big it is. It's really huge. And then, yeah, this looks like a piece of Chinese glass. Um, it's a monster piece, though. But yeah. for press glass, that is pretty big. So this is the Davidson 1956 catalogue um, that I d downloaded from the Victorian Press Glass website. And um, yeah, I, I went straight to this one and I thought I suck because it's not the same. Because I thought, yeah, I know, I think it's post-war. Um, and this is not the same. Um, there were some different ones. They're not the same either. And I thought, oh, let's try 1968. Hey. And here it is. So I don't suck that badly. Um, just guessing the wrong year. It's a 20455. Um, I do suck quite often, but not this time. It is Davidson. And it's not, it looks like it's 60s. Well, it might be. If it's 50s, it's late 50s. But um, yeah. And even the fact that it's got a clear frog in it with a coloured outside. It doesn't give you any colours or anything. It's just a picture with numbers. So... That is that. There's um. This looks like it's a Crosno decanter from the way the stopper peg is, where it's kind of like rounded bottom like that. Um, but this one's looks like it's got the rim. I think it's broken. Um, I think it's one of the patented lockable decanters, but I don't think it's working. I can't see a price on it either. This bit here's got a few bits of trinket set in a bit of Bagley Ooh, bowl. I think this is pre-war. I will try and find that. And um, yeah, some interesting bits of trinket set here. I think, I'm not sure. yeah, I think it all goes together. So um, there's no tray and it looks like it might be the whole set because there's like tops and bottoms. You've got seven peaks. Yeah, seven bits there. Little ring holder. Um, I'll try and find this one because I've not seen it before. Look at the candlesticks. They're really a bit weird. I'm looking at Wakeful Council Museum collection of Bagley glass here. And I found this blue bowl. It's the same blue bowl, but it's got some cold painting on it. This is the earliest version of this bowl I can find on here. Um, but I have to say, since I originally looked at this, some of the earlier pages on this website seem to have gone completely skew if I don't know, it's, maybe it's because I started looking at it. I don't know if I broke it by looking at it. But anyway, um, it's saying here 1950 to 75. I thought these were earlier. But um, yeah, 1950 to 75 it is. Um, but I don't know if that's specific to the ones with the cold painting on or if there's an actually an earlier one that doesn't have any painting on. Yeah, that's the problem. So anyway, this is the dates I've got for it at the moment. Um, and it, we've got a nice little, oh no, that's the item number. So the design number is 3169. Tulip Posy Vase. So there you go. So, trying to find that um, table set, the uh, trinket set, I should say. And I've looked through every British example that's on this uh, website. Um, you can see, like, there's all the Bagley ones, and you have to keep clicking like this to go through the different ones. And then there's Century, Chance, Chris Lay, Davison, Joblin, blah, 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 all of these. And you have to click through all of them. And it wasn't in any of those. 
so I went through all the Czech ones. There wasn't any of those. Belgium, American, German, Polish, Swedish, and Yugoslavian, and unknown maker and whatever. So, um, yeah, it's not in here. What I do think, so this is where, you, when you do this kind of thing, you learn something. I think it's English because this is one I just literally, badly one I just clicked on randomly. And it, it's the two candlesticks. Virtually nobody else has got two candlesticks with their trinket sets. They've got little other bits and pieces and stuff. But the service that we saw there is like an English one. I have to say, as a design, it's a bit janky to my, just to my own feeling. Like, this is quite elegant, but that's a bit, yeah, a bit janky. But um, I can't find it. And... Um, but I think, I think, 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 I think it's English just because of the layout of the service that, that, that comes with it. But it might not be. You never know because I haven't been able to pin down, but the configuration is closest to the English ones. Got a couple of box bootle wine bottles here. Let's have a look. Yeah, these look like they're free blown. They're not pressed ones. So these will be um in fact is that Amethy no it's brown. Um look with the handles applied. So not part pressed or anything, these are free blown. Um these will be from sort of like eighteen fifties or sixties or something like that. Yeah with an applied ring around the neck can you see that's separately added and then the handle this one's a bit amethysty looking against the light but it looks kind of brown away from the light yeah i don't have any books with box bootles just the wine bottles i've had ones that where the bottle has been converted into a decanter okay so but not white. So I've typed in box bootle wine bottle and just to see what comes up. And most of these, see, they're still making this wine today. And, and the bottle is the same shape. It doesn't have a handle. It's completely machine made, these bottles. But just this one here. So they went through some iterations to arrive at this kind of like perfect machine made modern bottle. Um, so you have the free blown ones like this one here, like the ones that we were looking at, which are were coming to England sort of like in the 1840s and 50s and 60s, I think. And people were making them into, um, into decanters by putting a little metal collar. You know, they would file off the little ring that was around the neck, put a metal collar over it and put a stopper in it and Hey Presto, you've got a little decanter with a little tiny handle on it. Um, but those ones, and and to tell the truth, most of them I see are like that. You don't see many that are just the wine bottle unadulterated because those they're wine bottles, they're just for chucking. So they do go through some different processes where the uh, bottle becomes a pressed bottle or blown in a mold with a seam and the the ring around the top becomes part of the mold and then the handle becomes part of the mold it's sort of like progressively it becomes more automated and then it loses the handle altogether so those two bottles were the earliest type where the ring is applied and the handle is applied and it's it's a free blown bottle so yeah, I'm quite happy that those two bottles are probably 150 years old. So, yeah, that's quite nice. Um, uh, they're a bit boring as they're brown. Um, some of them are green. Some of them, unlike you see on here, you know, they're brown or green usually. Um, but sometimes you occasionally see blue ones, amethyst ones, and very rarely red ones. But... Um, yeah, there's none of those on here. There's, in fact, there's, all of it is all modern 
Brooks bottle almost. Um, I think there was another one that's like a later one with this one here. I think this one is where the handle is part. This is all. Uh, this is a press glass one, so it's still an early one, but not as early as the two that we're looking at. So, uh, yeah, those are nice early bottles. I can't remember what the prices were. I think they were okay, but anyway, if you if you're a wine bottle collector, um, those are nice, good bottles, 150 years old. Check it out, giant polar bear. I wonder if they say who it's by. Let's check the label. Hadland, Norway. Ooh, with the original sticker. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, God, it's heavy. Where's the original sticker? Oh, I want to see the original sticker. Oh, actually, it's not. Stat oil. Okay. So that's... um. That's what they're talking about. But that is um, the Norwegian State Oil Company. Yeah. They privatised theirs and kept all the oil to them, the revenue to themselves. I have a whole bunch of um, Hadland catalogues <clears throat> and I've been through them all. And the only one that's got any kind of little statues on is uh, the 1965 one. I click in there and it's just got one page this one here um, there's no polar bears there so um, in fact you've got like a fish hair and isfugl which is a bird I presume and um, yeah an ugle that looks like an owl and that looks like a duck and oh and seals and penguins and a, whatever anyway yeah that's all it's got um, so I thought, hmm, I think Hadland, maybe Hadland's still going. And uh, they are, and they're still making things today. So the last catalogue I have is for 97, and it seems that, and there's no, it's just tableware and then nothing else. So it seems sometimes between 97 and now, they've started making glass figurines and things. So, yep, yeah, and there's no exact match for it. So that means at least it's not brand new. Um, and looking at these amazing prices on here for some of these things, I mean, if you want a glass block with three polar bears on it, it's 10, almost 11,000 pounds. So, yeah. And the other clue on it, so the bear actually did look a bit like this one here, this one, but obviously it's sitting on a block. The other thing was it had the... Um, the little logo for stat oil which i did double check to make sure i wasn't talking crap um stat oil is the norwegian state oil company so yeah it's norway hadland is from norway so yeah it's probably right i can't find an exact match for it but it probably I mean, let me just double check something i wonder when is this the nope that wasn't it that wasn't it. When did I? Oh, here we go. The current was from the merger of Statoil. Okay, so it's not called Statoil anymore. It's called Equinor. And it's telling you here. So Equinor, formerly Statoil. So it looks like Statoil stopped existing in 2007, which probably means it's earlier than 2007 and later than 1997 there you go we've got a little time frame for it there um which probably means that it there's a chance it might be vintage uh, but it's not very old there you go this is lead crystal uh, and it says on here that it's tiffany and co vintage crystal asp ice bucket 80 pounds it says it's stamped let's see if i can pick it up ooh, 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 ooh. if it is i can't see it anywhere i can't see. my wrists are gonna break off i think i'm gonna put it back down i can't find the stamp 
I'm going to try and uh, find that because, yeah, it's lead crystal. I found the um, Tiffany ice bucket. Here it is. It's got this label. It. I can't click through. It's gone. It's sold from, from this website that it was on. But it's got this little blue label uh, that you can't read here. But I, there were other ice buckets and there's this one with the same label on which you can read which says Tiffany and Co made in Germany so if it's the same label this exactly the same writing on it made in Germany means that it's post 1990 um, because it would say West Germany or it won't it, well if it's Tiffany it wouldn't say DDR which is Deutsche uh, you know the the common East Germany so yeah it's post 1990 um, I think because the label does let me just look at it again oh no no that's where it's not anymore yeah it does look like it's the same bit there looks it says like made in Germany Tiffany. anyway so yeah I think it's the same label made in Germany it's post 1990 so that's the best I can pin that down and right next to the Tiffany bucket is this um, I think this is Ge German um, solid flare oh 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 oh, oh. yes um, Walther West Germany so that makes it pre 1990 so yeah um, what's it say on there yes. yeah I think these are called Solly Flare um, I will try and um, find that this is the uh, 20th century glass website and I'm looking at the the little uh, it's actually a stem bar so a stem bars it's like a bud vase basically a little vase for holding a flower um, but you won't get a lot of water in it so you won't get a very big flower in it, or you'd have to water it every few hours otherwise it'll dry out but anyway um, yeah so this is it it's called I think I said Solly Fleur I was right wow makes a change um, it says West Germany blah 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 now what I have been on that I've been doing a little bit of research so this company was pre previously Walther and Zon which I've featured before because I found other things made by Walther and Zon previously in other little glass hunting exercises and um, it's now called Mikasa and Mikasa is still going and these are the vases that Mikasa they make a load of different things so it's probably an amalgamation of a bunch of different companies including the glassware so they're making pottery and silverware and so they're just making tableware stuff but they are still making vases this is what they've got none of them are particularly exciting um, so but yeah they're still going as glass makers um, and um, yeah they're, I mean they're making if I clear this one I'll try to see if they were making any of the yeah this is the other things they're making none of it's particularly setting me on fire what was the other one bowls so yeah it is what it is um, this is what they're making today um, none of it's jumping me making me jump up and down with excitement um, but they are still going and they're still making glass and and you never know they might do something super trendy in the future that we, we would like so there we go Walther it is as I said because it's wet it says West Germany that makes it pre 1990 I know it's not glass but I saw this um, lovely brass blah 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 George the fourth coins I think this is period these hands here these look very Regency it's it might not be period able to tell it looks like oh it is period because 
see this here. That is silver plate. This was silver plated. So, um, the copper base. Before they had electroplating, they had put silver on copper. They heat fused it on. That's how they used to do plating. This would have been silver plated um, because there is some of the plate that's left over. It's not been worn off or rubbed off or whatever. So yeah, this is a real George the Fourth. Um, and I think it's a punch bowl because it's got sort of like not a very stylish Monteith edge, but yeah, this is the so where your handle lies in it. So yeah, that's an interesting thing. That's probably from 1830s, something like that. That is a really nice old piece. That was the end of my um, part one, of my visit to Antiquarium in Weedenbeck. And um, yeah, my favorite thing was the Monteith bowl. That crappy copper bowl would have been silver plated, but Sheffield plate. Um, so it would have been a bright, shiny, uh, so it is a punch bowl. I mean, it looks like someone had been using it to keep their flowers in looking at the inside. But yeah, it would have been silver originally, even if it was only Sheffield plate. Um, but yeah, it's such a cool thing because old tech, you know, where someone has to um, beat out thin sheets of silver and press them into the surface of copper and heat it up and get them to fuse together to make silver plate. How cool is that? It's just like, none of this dip it in a bucket of chemicals with a bit of electricity and you're done. Uh, you need skills to do things like that. And um, and also you then you'd have to solder around the edges where it breaks and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really laborious process. Electroplating just killed it dead. Because um, you went from something that was very skillful to something that's Absolutely no skill, you just need the chemicals and a, and how to make a battery. And you just need acid and I think zinc and lead. I think that's about it. And away you go. But anyway, um, with that said, yes, there will be more parts. I suspect there's going to be about four parts to this video. Um, so please keep watching. And um, yeah, thank you for what. Oh, yes, nearly forgot. Um, all the links for connecting to Antiquarium will be in the description below. Um, the reference I use will be in the description below. And um, please remember to like and subscribe. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a good night. Good night.